and I want to tell you something about uh, OpenShift sizes, where you can scale up, scale down, and different flavors of OpenShift that we have. Uh, so, what is OpenShift? OpenShift is enterprise distribution of Kubernetes. Uh, it's different to other uh, Kubernetes distribution because we maintain uh, and basically also install OpenShift using OpenShift. There are a bunch of operators inside OpenShift that keep it together. They provide configuration API. Uh, one of these APIs, for example, cluster version. So there is a custom resource definition, class custom resource for cluster ver for version of OpenShift. You apply a new version by editing this custom resource, and all the operators come together and they will update uh, OpenShift, for example. It's uh, different to other Kubernetes distributions that have a special tool outside of the cluster to update, to install, for example, KOps, Cube ABM, ADM, they live outside of the cluster. So OpenShift is different, operators live inside, and it comes with different form factors. Uh, and you choose them uh, during installation. You need to choose what you want. Uh, you cannot change it afterwards. Uh, the most basic and the default option is highly available OpenShift. You get free control plane nodes. Uh, I will call them master sometimes because I'm used to that term. Uh, by default, these masters are not schedulable by default, <laughs> but you can make them schedulable easily. Uh, using this highly available configuration, uh, you can lose one control plane node. If something happens, some hardware failure happens, you can lose it. Cluster is still available, it's still working. Also, the cluster upgrades are smooth. You should not uh, see any disruption in the cluster services during upgrades because everything is highly available. A very simple picture, uh, you, nothing surprising here. You have, we have three control plane nodes. They, we have three replicas of the API server. All of them are masters, and there is usually a load balancer in front of them. We have three replicas of, of etcd. Again, three of all of them are masters. We have three replicas of kube control manager. One of them is master. All of them are, all the others are uh, standby replicas waiting for the master to die, basically. And the same for scheduler. We have three replicas, but only one is active. The other you are standby, and the applications uh, that you run on top of Kubernetes, on top of OpenShift, they run on separate nodes. The minimum requirement for this configuration is, of course, three machines. Uh, each of them at least four CPUs, 16 gigabytes of memory, it's pretty small. Uh, we test maximums. Uh, these are links uh, to actual documentation because it's not easy to scale it out. out. You need to know what you are doing we are testing with 2,000 nodes and 150,000 pods. And for that, we need 16 CPUs on each node and 69 gigabytes of memory and really fast storage for etcd. That's, that's usually the li limiting factor, storage for etcd. Uh, and uh, just free, free, free control plane nodes. We don't scale them much. What storage SSD? Uh, fast as SSD. Tip the best is local SSD. If you are in the cloud, you will pay a lot of money for the uh, highest tier of the storage you can get. Uh, some numbers from the empty, from empty control plane node. Uh, if just after installation, the cluster is doing nothing, it's just man managing itself. Uh, it takes six gigabytes of memory on each node. Uh, there is some, fr there is a lot of free space, but once you start running your applications, your pods, uh, API server and etcd will grow. On work, work nodes, by default, uh, we take about two gigabytes of memory for kubelet, for storage drivers, for networking, and for these services. Uh, if you look at a node with Prometheus, it will be much more memory taken by Prometheus. <laughs> So that was the highly available, the default that you should use. That's the safe default. Uh, for smaller deployments, we have single node OpenShift. During installation, you can choose you if you want high availability or single node. So you can choose single node. You have one node, one control plane node. If it breaks, it breaks. 
it's up to you to fix it. There is no operator that would fix it. If the API server is down, no operator can fix it because operators use API need API servers. The same for etcd. Also during reconfiguration or cluster upgrades, we need to restart those components, we need to restart API server, we need to restart etcd. They will not be available, the cluster is not available during upgrades. You can add more workers, so it's not single node open shift, it could be single control plane open shift, but uh, it has the same disadvantages, like if it breaks, like, sorry, you lose your cluster. Uh, the use case here is uh, the development, of course, and some edge devices and beefy edge devices. Uh, when you have your company pipeline, build pipelines and your applications, they are used to OpenShift, you use OpenShift APIs, you can use them in your data center when you have high, highly available OpenShift and you can put them to the edge to single out OpenShift. You can use the similar approach, similar APIs, similar YAML files, that's the use case. Uh, there is a price to pay, uh, we need to fit everything to a single machine, all uh, all the operators, all the workloads. So we need eight CPUs by default, a lot of memory. And on empty node, you can see uh, just after installation, it took 10 gigabytes of memory. Most, uh, there are ways how to trim it down. During the installation, you can choose which components you need, you want to use. This is with all components. You can choose, you don't want Prometheus, it was, this, that will save you a lot of memory. You can choose not to use uh, console. You can remove uh, storage and other components. You can save a lot of memory using those, but you can remove them only during installation, not afterwards. Well, pretty stupid picture. Everything is crammed to a single machine. Uh, for single node OpenShift, uh, we have multiple features. All these features are for highly available OpenShift 2, but they will shine on single node. Uh, you can use real-time kernel, kernel on your edge device. You can isolate all the OpenShift stuff to some CPUs and dedicate the rest of CPUs to your application that could be real-time. So if OpenShift gets busy with something, it will not affect your application that needs some response times. You can use NUMA, you can use storage that is available on, on the node. You can like put some additional device disks, you can partition them. Local storage operator will provide this disk uh, as raw disks. It will, you will see a persistent volume for the whole disk or for the whole partition. But if you want dynamic provisioning, you can use a logical volume management service operator, I believe. It will put these extra disks to a volume group and you can dynamically provision logical volumes out of them. Again, you can use all that in, high, uh, in highly available OpenShift 2. Uh, in the session description, you could see uh, I would wanted to talk about installation tools. However, I got lightning talk and most of these tools are, are behind paywall. You need to be OpenShift custom, edited customer. Uh, the open source one, well, all of them are open source, but the one that you get with OKD is OpenShift install. It's a command line tool. Uh, if you don't give it any parameters, there is a small wizard that will ask you basic questions. It will give you basic, highly available cluster. Uh, but if you want some customization, you can provide a huge YAML file with many fancy things. And that's the way how you disable capabilities like Prometheus, like storage, if you want to trim it down. And also you can choose number of master replicas. And I, I list Hypershift as a, as an installation tool. It's part of installation tool and part of form factor of OpenShift. It's a way how to run multiple open shifts at scale. So it runs, you can run open shift within open shift. And what does it mean? You get a traditional high, highly available cluster. You can install hypershift operator inside of that. It's just a pod at this point with a bunch of CRDs. But using this hypershift operator, you can create hosted control plane, hosted control, uh, hosted cluster and hosted control plane. Hosted cluster is basically custom resource. If you create it, 
it will create hosted control plane that runs a hosted API server, hosted at CD, group control manager, scheduler as a pod in the manage in the big cluster. This is, this is our regular pods. And uh, it will also run a cluster API inside the host inside the management cluster. And only the worker nodes will be outside of the cluster. And you can also choose, uh, do I want it this hosted control plane uh, single, with single replica, I will save a lot of CPU, a lot of memory, or I can scale it to high availability. And at this point, you can choose, you can scale up, scale down as you want. You can start with single replicas for everything and then scale up and then scale down if you don't need them anymore. Uh, this way you can host many clusters ins inside one uh, OpenShift cluster. So, uh, and it, they are also very easy to spin, spin up, and pretty quick to spin up. So when you need a new cluster for experiments, you spin a new cluster, you play with that, you shut it down. Another advantage is that uh, if somebody uses this hosted cluster, they see just these worker nodes, worker A, worker A, wor worker B, they will not see the management cluster. They cannot, they don't see uh, these API server pods, scheduler pods, they cannot break them. They just get the worker class, the worker, workers, and they can run uh, stuff on those workers without fear of damaging the cluster. So the question was if this worker dies, if all this hosted stuff will move to other worker, typically yes. Uh, there are many ways how to configure HyperShift and the hosted cluster. For example, you can dedicate few uh, workers to that, uh, to that hosted control plane so you can, uh, you can isolate them to some workers. But in general, if you don't do anything special, these are regular pods. It will be restarted somewhere else in the cluster without any issues. Theoretically, application could survive. <coughs> it depends how quickly, for example, that CD comes and uh, how quickly API server will be able to discover a new CD, like theoretically. There will be downtimes. There will be a short time downtime. So there is this uh, basic terminology. Terminology uh, HyperShift is a pretty big project. It uses in its own uh, terminology. One thing about HyperShift is they don't provide all uh, OpenShift APIs. For example, I told you there is API to upgrade the cluster, but uh, in HyperShift you do, there is not no such API inside the hosted cluster. You go to the management cluster and edit uh, HyperShift CR, CRDs instead to upgrade the cluster. No, 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 no. Only the HyperShift, there is a cluster API and network operator and this all these operators are running in the hosting control plane. And only they know about the workers and also the network connection is pretty hard to establish. It's, yeah, it's pretty hard. It's, uh, it's hard they, they do a lot of tricks, not for this lightning talk. They do some crazy tricks out of time. Okay. Uh, in the end, we have MicroShift. It's not OpenShift. It's distribution Kubernetes. It just runs Kubernetes API server at CD and so on. It's installed by RPM and Yum it, and it's systemd service. Sorry, no time for that. And a summary. I will uh, be here if you have any questions after the talk.